Ephesians chapter 6. I want to go over just kind of as a review uh, for maybe some that has not heard a lot of um, what I've been teaching on Sunday night concerning devils. Are they real? Some call them demons. Um, that's that's a word that's loosely related to devils, so I don't, that word itself not used in the Bible, but I get what people are saying when they refer to demons. They are, the word demon uh, literally means like an intelligent being. Um, and, or, or along the lines of a smart beast, a smart beast. So, um, what we know from the Bible about devils um, is that they are real. Um, who remembers where they originated, where they came from, what was their source? Melissa Kay? They are the stars, some, they are some of the angels evil angels, and from what I can see, they were created evil. God made good ones, and God made bad ones. Um, it's just like Jesus and the devil. Um, there's a choice of who you're going to follow in your life. You're going to follow God. You're going to follow Jesus Christ and what the Bible says. Or you're going to follow Satan and he will destroy your life. How I many of you know that? Say amen. Okay. He's, he has tried to destroy everybody here, everybody in this church. He does it through sin. He does it through temptation to get us to fall away from God and stay that way. So, they are, the Bible refers to them as gods with a little g. They are the gods of the idols. All the idols that the ancient religions built, Buddha statues, um, basically any kind of idol that's prayed to and worshipped, there is a devil associated with that idol. And that's what we see in the scriptures. But then the Bible then categorizes these devils into four particular groups. Each one having an area that they try to attack. So in Ephesians chapter 6, um, let's look, let's start in verse 10 and we'll go to the Lord in prayer. And again, I'm just going to, I think tonight I'm going to uh, just kind of re, just kind of refresh your course in devils and what they do. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And remember this morning I preached about walls and salvation. Uh, that was in Sunday school, walls are what are the barriers that protect us from bad things. Our skin is a wall around our body that keeps dirt out, keeps a certain amount of germs out. Sometimes it does a good job. You can say, well, it does a bad job, but I would rather have skin than not have skin. Okay? Whatever, however bad the skin keeps things out or however good it does, it's not perfect at it, but I'd rather have it than not have it. So, the armor of God is another layer of protection. Not necessarily trying to protect the flesh, but it protects what is most important in us, and that is our soul that's, on, that's in us. That soul is really who we are. Some say it's our consciousness, our conscience, uh, the seat of all of our being, our awareness, is our soul. And I would agree with that because when the soul, when you die, the soul leaves the body. 
the body then is no longer aware of anything because it's dead. And so death, from what I can see, seems to be the departing of the soul and the spirit. Those things are what gives us life. And when those things depart, there's no more life. So we are trying to protect that which will or can exist beyond death. Everybody dies. Amen? Everybody dies. But there is something in us that can live forever with God in heaven. So, verse 12, this is how he categorizes these devils. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against, number one, principalities. Against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And we'll kind of explain that tonight. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is what? The Word of God. Your Bible is a sword. That's, your, that's what puts you on the offense. Okay? The other ones are for defense. The helmet, and we'll, we'll cover these in a little bit. But those are defensive. That's defensive armor. It's meant to protect. The sword is what allows us to go on the offense. Okay? It allows us to do warfare, not just stand and protect ourselves, but go against our enemies so that we don't have to worry about them. We have to deal with them ever again. So let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask God to guide us and lead us and um, that this will be a blessing and a help to somebody tonight. Heavenly Father, I serve you and I'm glad I do it. I thank you, God, for everything you've done for me. I thank you, Father, for the deep, dark pit that you pulled me and everybody else here out of. Lord, we were found in a very dark place. Lord, we had done dark things and we sinned. We went against what you said. We broke the Ten Commandments. And Father, we thank you for, for forgiving us and for helping us out of that dark, evil, bad place that we were in. We thank you for shining the light in our life, showing us the way of salvation. We thank you for the Bible which is our guide. It gives us understanding of the world around us and what is going on. We are able, Lord, through the Bible to see things that our eyes cannot see. And Father, we thank you for that, for without the Bible, we have no guide. There's nothing to lead us. And Father, I pray, God, that you would bless your word tonight, magnify it, honor it. And Lord, let it bring light to all of those who need that light and live by that light. May that light shine in our own lives and reveal things, Father, that we need to know. Things that, God, you want to help us with. Things you want to deal with. Things you want to chasten us over. Father, we are your children. And you can do with us what pleases and honors you. But, Father, we know you're a loving God. And all your chastening, Lord, is intended to make us better people, better Christians. Better sons and daughters of God. So, Father, we thank you and we ask your blessings on the word tonight. Open up our eyes and help us to see and understand things that, uh, Lord, we never knew before. Or, God, remind us that daily, daily, we need this armor. Because probably at, at least one point in our day, we're going to have to fight the devil off. Somehow, some way. So open up our eyes and our hearts tonight. Help us to be attentive to your word. Thank you, Lord, for what you brought into this place. I thank you, Lord, for the people that you brought into us online. Pray, Lord, that we could always be a blessing to them. 
And we give you the praise in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Now, let's run down this very quickly. And I'm just going to kind of throw it out. This is kind of pop quiz night. And uh, so anyway, the four groups of devils. Let's go through those. Number one is what? What's number one? Principalities. What are principalities? What are these devils? What sort of area do they try to hinder the work of God or hinder Christians in some way or cause us to cause God's people to fail in life or to fail in living for God or whatever? What area do they deal with? Do you remember? Principalities. Prince. Authorities. Very good. A prince is an authority. So in every, every person in the world is under some form of authority. Everybody in this room is under the authority, number one, of the city of Festus, because we're in the city limits. Number two, the county of Jefferson. There are, there is a county council and a county executive, and there are rules and guidelines that govern over us in Jefferson County. We're also under the rule and authority of the state of Missouri, and the governor and the legislature and the judges. Uh, then we're under the authority of, we don't have a king in America, thank God. Our forefathers said no king save King Jesus. So we have a president, we have a Congress, we have a Supreme Court. But even over them, there is a authority that is higher than them. What is it? The Constitution. The Constitution is the highest authority in this nation and principalities will do everything they can to try to destroy, believe it or not, to try to destroy the Constitution. Because anybody or anybody in office who thinks that they are above the laws, that's, those are devils that are planning that in this person's mind. They're inspiring them in a, in an evil way to go against the authority that is over them. When, when people who are under authority, like where you work, you have a boss, you might have a foreman, a manager of some kind. When you do something that goes against their authority over you, believe it or not, there are spirits that are part, that are rebellious spirits. And they put it in people's minds to rebel against authority. Think about children. Do children have authority over their lives? Children. Do your children, Melissa, have authority over their lives? It's been a long day, has it not? The answer is yes. Who has that authority? Say you and John. Okay. You're the authority over their lives. If they do something that you told them not to do or did not do something that you told them to do, what was the inspiration behind their rebellion against you? Principalities. Principalities. Very good. Boy, she's sharp tonight. John, you need to take her home. So you get it. Principalities inspire rebellion. They inspire anybody that's under any kind of authority. There are de because devils hate God. They hate Jesus. And they, they are going to rebel against God. Right? Isaiah 14. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart... I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. And in Revelation 12, we see Satan and one third of the angels fighting a war in heaven to gain control of heaven 
to sit on so that Satan can sit on God's throne. That's principalities. They are rebellious spirits that inspire and lead rebellion. Those spirit uh, turn to uh, turn to Revelation. I'll show it to you. Do you know what they look like? These principalities, you know what they look like? Frogs. I don't know why God made them look like frogs, but they look like frogs. Look, look at verse, uh, Revelation 16, verse 12. There it is. They look like frogs. The sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, and the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like what? Frogs. They were frog-faced devils. They came out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils. You see that? Let me, let me try to remind some of you of a song. We don't need no education. We don't need no thought control. What's the rest of it? Teachers, leave them kids alone. <laughs> Who remembers that song? What spirits inspired that song? It's a song of rebellion. And it's telling students in schools, you don't have to do what your teacher tells you to do. Hey, teacher, leave them kids alone. Those are devils. You like my singing? Listen, I can sing that better than, who was it, Pink Floyd? I just don't make the money that they make, all right? But that's, that's uh, Twisted Sister. Dee Snyder and Twisted Sister singing, We're not going to take it. No, we ain't going to take it. And the, rock, the music video to that song featured a rebellious teenage boy throwing his parents out the window. That's principalities. Does that make sense? Those are spirits inspiring people to rebel. And the purpose of that, look back in your Bible to verse 14. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. And that battle is the Antichrist, the beast, and all the people of the earth gathering together to fight Jesus and all of his saints. Who's going to win? Jesus and all of his saints are going to win. They're not going to win the battle. The devils aren't. The principalities aren't. So everybody that is following principalities is going to get slaughtered. There is a price to pay for rebellion. Is there not? If you tell your boss in so many blankety blank words what you blankety blank think of his blankety blank management style, there's a price to pay for that. And spirits don't care what happened to you. They don't. Okay? So that's number one. What's the second group? We wrestle not against, it's up there on the screen, principalities. Group number two is what? Powers. What area of control or what area do these devils like to operate in? Huh? Witchcraft is part of it. That pe because people think they have powers. They think the universe gives them energy to do things. Okay? They think they can say positive words and think positive thoughts and, and, and create magic spells that cause what they want to happen, to happen. Okay, that's part of it. Who's got another thing about powers? Or what else do powers try to do to people? Huh? Control, rules, corrupt, corrupt what? Okay. What about things 
that we humans find that we are powerless against? Habits. Bad habits. People whose every other word is a very dirty word. That's, that's mild. What about alcohol habits? Does alcohol hold power over people? And they are weak against that power. They call alcohol spirits. Babylon in the Bible, this whore of Babylon, holds a cup in her hand, and with it she makes everybody drunk, and so that they do what she tells them to do. They hold, she holds power over them. Alcohol holds power over people. What else holds power over people? What else? Huh? Sin does in general, yes. Drugs. Okay? Drugs do. There are people in this church, there are people watching online that have had drug habits and find them impossible to break. Um... Some of the people that I went to school with, high school, spent years in prison because of drugs. Okay? One guy that, oh, I didn't like him anyway, Dominic. He's in prison right now. He's out? He'll, it won't be long. For, for manufacturing methamphetamine. Okay? People get hooked on that, but they get hooked also on, what's the big deal now in America? Painkillers. Get hooked on opioids. They get hooked on these things. They have no power against it. Okay? Now, part of that are the doctors who are pushing these things. Pushing them, pushing them, pushing them. Because they get kickbacks from the pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical companies to do this. That's how it works. And... They get these people hooked on them, and then they say, well, you can't have no more. Okay? And, I mean, it's bad, but we have a very serious problem in America and even in church people. I read some stories, this has been years ago, this is all the way back in the 90s, when I was reading stories about Amish communities who had serious drug problems, Amish communities, Mennonite communities. These people are supposed to be the separate ones who live these holy, clean lives. Uh-uh. They got problems. They got sin nature just like everybody else does. They got a weak body like everybody else does. And powers are spirits that once you're under the control of something, they'll use you. They will use you to make you do whatever they want you to do. There's somebody that some of you people in this church know, he's preached here before, that as a young man he knew that God had called him to preach, but he strayed away from that and went out and made his name in life and made money and did a lot of things and he got into drinking, he got into chasing women and and going to bars and getting in fights and everything else. He had a bad temper. And he found a man in bed with his wife and went and got a shotgun and chased him down the street and shot him. The guy lived, but he's sitting in jail and he told me this. He said, Mike, he said, when I shot that man, he said, I heard the devil laugh at me. I heard it. And he said, I'm laying in a jail cell, having supposed to have been out preaching. And the devil sitting on me saying, I can make you do whatever I want. He said, that's when I realized that I'd walked away from my calling. He was telling me that as a young man because he saw that very same thing in me. Okay, I was headed that same direction. And so that's what powers do. And we are, we're always wrestling 
against them, even as Christians, are we not? Okay, so can it be said that everybody in this room, and if, if we could see the people who are watching online, but everybody in this room, would you raise your hand and say, you wrestle principalities and powers? Okay, thank you for being honest. Then, so that's, that's powers. Anything where they can get you under their control, you see, principalities removes you from godly authority and powers will put you under their authority. Does that make sense? Okay. And think about it. If you are, if you have decided that you're going to live God's way, okay, the devil can't hold power over you because you're, you're still under, by your own choice, you're still under God's authority. And God controls you. God watches over you. God protects you. There's a, where's authority is, is protection. The city of Festus has authority over this area and the police of the city of Festus patrol this area and they are supposed to protect us. When we had the guy run in from the highway who got in a fight with the highway patrol, had thousands of dollars worth of heroin on him, and he ran into this church basement minutes before we started the Sunday night service. That literally happened. And God put it in John and Jared to get this guy to take, give him a ride over here to Main Street where there's a drug house. And he wanted dropped off over there. He, we didn't know it. He was running from the police. And just after they pulled out with him, the cops come in here and saying, have you seen this guy? He's about this tall. And they're going, yeah, we gave him a ride. Where? And we told them where, they eventually caught him, okay? But they are there to protect us from people like that, okay? And you stay under God's authority and principalities won't move you out so they can't put you under cruel authority. But when you decide that you don't want to live by God's rules and God's laws, you voluntarily are asking principalities to help you get out of God's authority. And I promise you the devil or God, God will say to you, you know what? I'm going to let you go down that road for a little while. I'm going to pull you back. But you'll wish you had never gone down there. So that's principalities and powers. The third one. What's the third one? Rulers of the darkness of this world. Okay, the moon and the stars are bright, but they're not as bright as the sun. So the Bible says that Jesus is like the sun. He shines the brightest and he shows us the way which we could go. If we're going to walk in the woods, who in here is ever, who in here likes, to, I like to walk through the woods. Okay, but I don't like to walk through the woods at night with no moon and no flashlight. You're asking for trouble. You're asking to hit a branch. Or you're asking to trip over a log. Or you're asking to walk off an embankment. That you, huh? And get a spider web up your nose. That's what you're asking for. Okay? So, the Christ, the sun, lights our way during the day. But there are spirits. The Bible calls them stars. There are spirits that like to keep us in darkness. And there's a lot of different types of darkness. Sin. When you disobey God, sin always brings darkness. Sin is dark. Somebody take a look out in the parking lot real quick. Okay? Sin is dark. Um, maybe a man. Maybe a man. Okay? All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Devils like to keep people in darkness. And there's different types of darkness. Sin brings darkness to you. When you disobey God, you're in darkness. Because we don't want everybody finding out that we're disobeying God. So we hide things. 
And once we get there, there are spirits that want to keep that darkness going. One of the reasons why we don't want to walk in the woods at night with no light is because there are animals that don't come out during the day, but they will come out at night. Scary ones. Amen? And there are spirits that love darkness and they inspire people to love darkness. There's darkness of depression. Anybody who's ever dealt with depression is very dark. It's a pit. It's what it is. And you have no power, you have no light, and you hate it. And there are devils that want to keep you there. The absence of the Word of God. The Bible says that it is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. So the absence of the Word of God in someone's life is darkness. That's all you have to do to get darkness, right? Is to shut the light out. So close your Bible. Leave it lay. Don't read it. Don't think about it. Don't ponder it. Don't pray. And you'll be in automatic darkness. Amen? Automatic darkness. And there are spirits that want to keep people in darkness. Um, I'm was going to show you tonight, but God kind of changed my course, that there is an effort by devils in high places, which I guess I can talk about next, but there are devils in high places who want to change what church and Christianity is all about. Why? Why? Because to these devils, the only real enemies they have are Christians. The only real enemies that they have are us saints. And we have armor and we have a weapon that destroys them. We have the weapons. It would be like if, if North Korea developed some sort of super weapon that they could put it up in the sky and just hit a button and just start killing hundreds of millions of people with this little ray gun. And we had no defense against it whatsoever. What should we do to North Korea? Bomb them back. I would say bomb them back into the Stone Age, but most of them are there now. But we should not ever allow North Korea... To develop a weapon that would kill everybody. Right? So devils know that we have weapons. That can go against them. Okay? And they don't want us to keep those weapons. So, the, the, the rulers of the darkness of this world want to maintain... The darkness. They want to keep the darkness going. They want to keep people's minds. The Bible says that Satan has blinded the minds and the hearts of men. So they can't see the truth of the word of God. So then, what's the fourth group? Spiritual wickedness in high places. So, let me just... Um, let me show you what I, what I kind of wrote some notes on this. Look at that. That's the Jehovah's Witness headquarters in Denmark. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, that's... And the leader of the Jehovah's Witness, Charles Taze Russell, that's his... That's his... I would say his website. That's his grave marker. Okay, that all-seeing eye pyramid. Okay, that's him. So l let me just run this by you. Does Hollywood... Do you think the people who make movies have an agenda against God and against the Bible. They're in high places. The top movie executives all have an agenda 
to change the way people see the world and the way people see God and the way people see Jesus. They have an agenda. They promote immorality. How many of you believe that? New Age ideas, pagan gods, they promote a, any kind of Jesus that is not the Jesus that's in this Bible. That's spiritual wickedness in high places. Local family, there, Noah Hutchings told me this. He said that, I mean, he, he had been in Christian radio for years, 50 years. And in his lifetime, when he, back in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, into the 80s, you had these little family-owned local AM radio stations all over the country, and they were broadcasting local preachers, local gospel singers, and things like that. I did an internship at a church in McAllister, Oklahoma, and every Sunday morning, that church and the people of that church would go to the local radio station, and some of the guys would sing. They had me sing on there a couple times. They had me give a testimony there on there. But it was a, it was a live local radio program, and it was broadcasting to the people in that area, and they were just trying to preach the gospel. And that whole AM station was locally owned, and they used local ministers, and had local singers, and they promoted the gospel. And Noah Hutchings told me that in his lifetime, he saw these big companies buy out all of these locally owned AM radio stations, or some in some cases, FM radio stations. They would come in with big money, make an offer they couldn't refuse, buy them out, and then replace the programming with their speakers and their agenda. Thus changing. I mean, think about it. Adolf Hitler knew this. Adolf Hitler knew that if he was going to win the hearts of the German people, we've got to send out propaganda. Joseph, who was it? Goebbels. It was Goebbels who was producing movies where the scripts were written so that when you watched it, you knew that the hero in the movie was Adolf Hitler. You knew that it was about Germany winning the war and being better than everybody else in the world. And they were kept pumping out these movies to get these people to, to go along with Hitler and what he was doing. And it worked. And it's the same idea. So you take away the local churches from having an impact in their own community to in the high places now, one corporation owning a ton of radio stations all over the country and then them giving everybody, in other words, you listen to what we tell you to listen to. You listen to the music that we put out, you listen to the speakers that we've hired and then you'll believe what we tell you to believe. Okay? And let me tell you something. There's not a pope that stands between you and God. Any one of you can read your Bible and have God speak directly to you through the Bible and you can talk to God through Jesus Christ. Okay? But the idea is, is to inject something between you and God in a high place. So that they now are telling you what to do and what to believe. Uh, publishing companies. Old, let's say, um, Christian publishing companies that have been around for 100 years. That if you go back 50 years and better, the things they put out was all gospel. And it was pretty much common Bible Christianity. But in the last 20 years, that has changed drastically. So now the publishing companies, they hire authors to write books that they want out there. And people buy it. The Jesus Prayer. Or the Jesus Calling, or whatever, whatever that's called. Uh, the Shack. You know what that is? It's a book, and now a movie, that is about as blasphemous as can be, in this book, God is a black woman. Okay? That's not God. That's not who He is. And so, it's from the top down, telling everybody, in other words, don't read your Bible, read our books. Our books will show you the way. Our books will give you the light. In Ezra chapter 4, 
The enemies of the Jews did not want the Jews rebuilding the temple and rebuilding the wall. Because once they built the wall, then nobody could get in and attack them. So they hired counselors against them to frustrate their purpose. They hired count just like Adolf Hitler and Goebbels, Joseph Goebbels, hired actors and scriptwriters to change the way people think and the way people are seeing the war in Adolf Hitler. That's what's being done in 98% of the Christian bookstores around this country. They're nothing but pure garbage. If you need help learning about God, God will sit with you while you read the Bible and he'll help you. I know that to be true. So this is, this is what happens. And then, yeah, I got to tell this. A guy that I know, his company was hired to do construction work at a military base. And there was one building where it's quite is a big building and there was a part of that building that was off limits all the time nobody there was his construction crew always had somebody with them at all times he didn't do nothing he just was with them to make sure that they did what they were supposed to do and not go into certain places where they were not supposed to go and this guy kept seeing in this one part of the building, these high-ranking military staff go in. And from time to time, these very attractive young ladies walking in. And you know, you kind of think, you know, what's up with that? Well, he had the nerve to ask the handler that was with them. And he said, what's going on there? And the, all the guy said was, what do you think's going on there? Okay, wink, wink, nod, nod. I'm telling you, and your Bible's telling you, in every place around the world where there are people who have a lot of power and a lot of money, they can and do get by with wickedness because they are in high places. Who remembers... Sheriff Walter Buck Berger. Not many of us left. Okay. Don, how long have you been in the Festus area? 17 years? Okay. Well, we go back to the 70s. So there's things we remember. Walter Buck Berger, there were things that he allowed to go on in Jefferson County. He was the sheriff. And there were things, I don't know if you remember this, but on 141 between Arnold and Fenton, there was a whole row of massage parlors. And Walter Buck Berger had his hand in the till in every one of those. Spiritual wickedness in, because who's going to go after him? He's the sheriff, right? He thinks that he's above everything. And I'm, I'm just telling, in, in, in all these powerful places, there's wickedness that go on because these people think that they can do this and get away with it. And, huh? Yeah. Who remembers the uh, former mayor of Festus that shot and killed his son-in-law who was also a part-time business partner with him in a security company that he had because he thought he could get away with it because because of his and even they had his trial and found him guilty but because of the power and influence that he had in this county he said well i'm going to appeal it don't put me in jail until i win the appeal so even though he was found guilty, you're supposed to go to prison. But he got to stay out of prison. And when that was found out, they changed the laws in the state of Missouri to say that if you're found guilty, even if it's being appealed, you're going to prison, period. And when they went out to arrest him, 
to finally put him in prison, even in his appeal process, he went in the bathroom and shot himself because he felt like he was above the laws. Spiritual wickedness in high, high places. And it's in Jefferson County, St. Louis County. It's in, listen, I went off Thursday on that new prosecutor in St. Louis County who says he's going to let all the deadbeat dads get off with not paying their child support. He's not going to prosecute them. And anybody caught with marijuana in St. Louis County, he's not going to prosecute that either. In other words, he has now declared that marijuana use is legal in St. Louis County. That's spiritual wickedness in high places. Corruption in politics, corruption in business, corruption in finance places, corruption in church hierarchies. Spiritual wickedness exists in high places. This lady up here was the D.C. madam. Her name was Deborah Jean Palfrey. She had an escort service in Washington, D.C. Now, she was not in the seedy side of town. She was in the rich side of town, and her, she had a book full of names of clients that was never supposed to go public. And they found her hanging mysteriously in her mom and dad's shed behind their house. Okay? She was, she knew that her services were used by high people in high places, the United States government. Let's not be ignorant in believing that America's the good guys and none of this stuff goes on like it goes on in the rest of the world. It goes on. If you think the drug cartels have power in Mexico, I'm telling you that drug syndicates in America have power in America. Prostitution rings have power in America. Huh? Child traffickers have power in America. Okay? That's, the, that's spiritual wickedness in high places. It is to corrupt those who hold the power so that the devil can control those people. He doesn't have power that you don't give him. You keep that in mind. Okay? And we have, I'm, I'm going to be done, we have defense mechanisms against spiritual wickedness in high places. It will not surprise me. I won't like it, but it will not surprise me if at some point people who are in high places would try to shut gospel preaching, Bible believing churches down. Why? Because we're going to say that certain things are wrong in sins and we're going to preach against them, but we're going to preach that God can forgive you and salvation is free. We're going to do it in love. But they're going to, they don't like it. So at some point, they'll, sh they'll try to shut all that down. Just remember that we have a shield to defend ourselves with. The fiery darts are going to be thrown. Amen? Fiery darts are going to be thrown because that's what the devil does. But we have the shield, we have the faith, and we have the sword. And in verse 18, Ephesians 6 says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. I, I talk so much about the armor and the powers against us in Ephesians 6, but I, I, I fail to preach the praying always part. Pray always. Pray always. Praying doesn't always involve getting down on your knees, closing your eyes, folding your hands, and reciting a prayer. You can pray, you can talk to God all day long. Let the voices you hear that tell you to do stuff be, be the voice of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Uh, let's stand to our feet. Buck Burger. He's now, he's dead now. He's stood before God and has been judged. 
And, you know, I, I respect men in uniform. I have high praise for first responders. But I know we've had crooked cops in Jefferson County. That's just part of it. Okay? So pray always that God will watch over you and God will protect you. God will keep you. Okay? And then pray for others that God will protect them. Father in heaven, come before you tonight and we just thank you, God, for being a good God to us. Thank you for this Bible that sheds light on what goes on around us that we can't see. And Father, I, I know, Lord, that I have my own demons, my own devils that I fight, I deal with. And Father, I pray, dear God, that you would always keep me um, protected from what they want to do to me, from what they want to do to my marriage. Protect us from what they want to do to my daughters and my sons. Protect them, Lord, from what they want to do to all their families. And protect, Lord, my people here, church, those, even those watching with us online, Lord. Protect them. Give them a shield called faith. And that can, that can quench those fiery darts. God, just protect your people and watch over us, God. The world's going to hate us. And that is growing every day. Thank you, God, Lord, for letting us reach out with a helping hand to people. Help us, dear God, to never forget, Lord, the sins that you have helped us escape from. And the things that had power over us. So we now ask, Lord, for your blessings tonight as we dismiss. Help us to go with your care. And, Father, remind us, remind us, God, to pray always. All that we remember every day, all of our waking time, Lord, talking to you. Help us to do that, Father. Thank you, Lord, for giving us that opportunity and for hearing us when we cry out to you as rotten and awful and filthy, nasty sinners that we are. Thank you, God, for hearing us when we cry to you. We love you. We thank you for Jesus, our Savior, and we pray in his name and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you tonight.